Marcel Dixon recently did an interview on Fox Digital in regards to reparations and how the Biden administration, Joe Biden specifically, neglecting to even address the reparations issue and you know, and he talked all that crap about having the black communities back, which we all know. I mean, I never did believe him because, I mean, when have any of these politicians in Washington ever kept their word on anything to us? Never. You know, the only time they feel motivated to get bills passed, if it's more bills on the police being empowered out here or things to the nature of what's going to be taken away from us. Oh, they'll gladly get unanimous on that. But for any issue that matters to us, all of a sudden, they don't want to address or talk about the issue. Now, we also know recently, um, Cori Bush came out with a bill that we already know is not going to go anywhere. $14 trillion, it's not going nowhere. And they know it's not going to go anywhere when they came out in the media with it. They already know that thing is DOA. So I'm going to let you listen to some of what he said. Now, I got some subscribers that get upset because I may not post a whole interview. You got to understand, sometimes you got to be careful about the length of what you post because then you're hit with copyright claims. So those of you that are not aware, sometimes I just can't post the entire interview from start to finish, but I will show you a clipping of it. And also remember, you have the opportunity to find this stuff and view it for yourself. If you want to see the whole thing, all you got to do is put the person's name out there, Fox Digital, and you can watch the whole thing from start to finish. I mean, uh, let's not try to act like there's no way for you to view this other than on my channel. I'm just saying. So let's get to um, what he had to say, and I'll be right back with the rest of my commentary. I'm a patriot. That means justice for you should be just as important to me as justice for me. Because whatever America does to me and they're allowed to get away with it, they'll be coming for you. And my name is Greg Marcel Dixon. I am a teacher by profession. I'm a low country native here in South Carolina. Uh, my family's been in the low country of South Carolina down in the coast in the Southern part of the state since at least the mid 1700s. And I'm currently running for Congress. I'm running to represent South Carolina District 6 in the U.S. House of Representatives. I've always had an interest in my family's genealogy. So I was fortunate when I was born, all of my great grandparents, except one, were alive. And I even had two great, great grandparents who were alive. And my father was raised by his great grandparents who were born in the 1890s. And one died in the late 1970s and one died in the early 1980s. They were born 1896, 1895, respectively. So I was born within reach of people who were literally the children of those who were enslaved or they were raised by people who were enslaved because their parents died. And in the video I posted on Twitter, I talked about my great grandmother, my dear Nana, Justine Washington Brown, who pretty much helped raise me along with my mother. She died at 101 when I was 31 years old. I knew she was raised by her grandparents, but I never thought much of it until one day I was looking through the census records and I found that her grandfather, who would be my great, great, great grandfather, was born in Buford in 1838. And by all measures, he was definitely born enslaved because he's there on the Freedmen records, the Freedmen Bureau records. Same thing with my great grandfather, who just turned 99 on Tuesday. He grew up surrounded by people who were formerly enslaved. He is still alive. So I literally Skyped him the other day. I spoke with a man who was surrounded by people who were formerly enslaved by the United States of America, and he is still very much alive and well. The Freedmen's Bureau was an agency of the government that was established 
to help provide for the needs of those who were formerly enslaved and their children. But the Freeman's Bureau was supposed to help Black Americans gain equity in the labor force, home ownership, land ownership. It was supposed to make sure that we were uh, repaired, that the country repaired the damage they did to us. That never happened. There's a push right now for Joe Biden. I'm going to be nice. I call him slow Joe Pro Biden, but Joe Biden, there's a push for him to re bring back the Freeman's Bureau, which he can do via executive order. Now, Donald Trump was going to do a Department of African American Affairs, not quite the Freeman's Bureau, but it would have been in that same vein. Joe Biden said to Black Americans, y'all have always had my back, which is we're fools for doing that, and he would have ours. He can, with executive order, bring back the Freeman's Bureau, and he has not done it. That Bureau has an unfinished job of repairing the great inequities that we see here in America, where Black Americans have been in this country longer than nearly all other ethnic groups, and yet we're to the bottom in terms of land and wealth. And that's because the job of reconstruction never finished. Donald Trump had plans where he was going to invest at least $500 billion into the Black American community. He was gonna start Department of African American Affairs to focus specifically on our needs. He was talking about the damage that illegal immigration causes to Black Americans. There were some good- Ladies and gentlemen, okay, so you heard what he said, and I do agree with a lot of what he said. And, you know, what I get tired of is when they come and insult our intelligence talking about studies. This country kept unbelievable records on slavery. It, Congress, the Library of Congress got slave recordings, bills of sales. They know who was making transactions, who were getting mortgages for slaves. They knew where these slaves were located, how many the person had. If you look at the census, some of these big plantations had three, 400 slaves working on the grounds and inside of the homes of the slave owner. They act like, you know, everything is all brand new. As soon as you say reparations, all of a sudden, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? You sure didn't have those questions when slavery was in full effect. You weren't worried about how stuff was being done. You made sure it happened. Well, you should put that same energy into reparations. You make it happen. Anything less is a load of BS. So y'all, please tell me what you think about what he said. I do agree. There are really no excuse for this not getting done other than racism is the main reason why it has not happened. Because all this stuff about how you going to do this, how you going to do that, that's just, those are just smoke screens. It really is. Especially when we see money distributed to Ukraine and towards immigrants and, and everything else, you sure don't have those questions then. When money is going out of, of the country to foreign nations, you sure don't put up no fuss then. So when it comes down to reparations, we're not trying to hear you. Y'all, please tell me what you think about this video. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.